So here's something strange for you guys. This is a Nivola commercial fan made in Holland. Not sure how much you can see on there. This belongs to the museum. There were three of these on Craigslist near Fanimation. And I saw the ad and I showed it to Tom Frampton and I said, Do you want these? And he said, Of course. So a third guy, Rocky, actually went and picked them up. And two of them are still sitting in the museum. And the third one I decided to take back here so we could play with it. So it doesn't have a uh, current rating, but it does say 140 watts. So that would be like 1.2 amps, roughly. So let's start out on the decade box and see what it does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nothing. There we go. 13. Must be a shaded pole motor to react like that. I don't know if some of these are supposed to be bent higher and lower or if they're all supposed to be at the same height. 14. We're at 0.77 amps, by the way. 15. I don't even know what it's supposed to draw on high. I tell you what, let's see what it's supposed to draw on high. Let's start there. Let's start with the zero to high. 0.91. Here's zero to high. Okay, it started out at over 3 amps and went down to 1.4. I'll let you watch that again on the amp meter because that was insane. Clearly the bearings are a little noisy, but I don't know enough about it to take it apart and oil them. It's got a fast spin down. Which I guess is good for the purposes of the video. So I'm just going to do zero to high again. Watch this. So up to three amps. Point four. Okay, Andy's doing the airflow test, so I'll do it. I feel some from it right here, quite a bit actually. Not really anything underneath it. It just kind of throws outward, huh? Yeah, kind of like a really fast version of the uh, torto that we just tested. I think there might be a. This might be a winner for as far as the spreading air out over wide. Yeah. That's what they're designed to do. I feel more from it straight away from it than I do below. So I don't know how I can use these on that high of a ceiling. Right here is where I feel the biggest breeze from it. And then as I get closer. It's definitely a powerful fan. I'm scared to stick my hand in there. Right there. Right about there. Okay. I would assume they're all supposed to be lined up, and the ones that are bent are not supposed to be bent. But I don't want to go bending them back, given that I don't know for sure. No. I mean, as heavy as it is and as small as that blade span is, why would it? Okay. We're at 14.76. 15.83. Let's stop it real quick and just see if it'll start from these. Yep. That's 14. 15, 16, let's go 20. 20 is a bit of a jump. Let's go back down. Let's go 18. 
Bottom bearings crying out for help. 20. 1.2. Oh, 25 is over. Three is one point four six, but let's see when it gets up to speed. Can we turn it to high? Then back down. Still draws one point four three, which is the same as it draws on high, but goes much slower. So that's interesting. It definitely doesn't do well on the capacitor based speed controls. Try it on a solid state. Those remind me a lot of a K63 motor with that cast bottom end bell. Okay, we're at 0.7, same as it did on the capacitor base control. Eighth of the turn, 1.27. So it does okay on a solid state control. Not a huge range of speeds though. You've got slow, you got medium. Another eighth of the turn. It's two amps, but it's gonna drop down. Seems like. Yep, it drops down to 1.3. And then here's high, 1.39. Yeah, I don't know if I'd get one of these for myself. It's just not the kind of thing that really interests me, but it, it's cool. It's different and weird and cool. I don't even know what era they're from. They turn up on eBay from time to time. Okay, back to the museum you go. Anything else we should see, Andy? Can you think of anything we missed? No. Okay, well, thanks for watching.